in this video, we're going to continue with this example of a cooperative garden, but we're going to solve this problem using computation. So on the left-hand side of my screen, I have the question that we've been working from along with the constraints that we have established already. So if you need to revisit how we establish these constraints, please go and see uh, a previous video. Um, on the right-hand side of my screen, I have Microsoft Excel and I'm working in a Mac. So let's go ahead and set up our, pro our problem in our workbook. So first I'm just gonna type solution and it's nice to keep these things uh, nicely organized. So um, we have our solution and then I'm going to label my decision variables. So we have two decision variables. We have the number of bags of super grow and we label this as X1 and we have our number of bags of crop quick and we label this as X2 and this is the variables that we've been using throughout our solution and if you need to adjust these so that they are the right size you can just go up and double click on the cell and Microsoft Excel will automatically um, adjust the size to its appropriate size. From there, um, a formatting thing that you can do is you can right click and format your cell. You may wanna add a bit of a thicker border around this. So I'm just gonna add a thicker border and I'm going to fill as just a yellow fill. This just helps me remember that um, uh, these are my decision variables. From there, I'm going to write, um, in this case, we're dealing with uh, cost. And we're told that each bag of Super Grow costs $6 and each bag of Crop Quick costs $3. And then we're going to have our um, function here, which will ultimately be, represent our total cost. And just as a nice reminder to ourselves, it's nice if you write what the uh, objective function is. So in this case, the min z was equal to 6x1 plus 3x2. This was the objective function we've been working through the entire time. So again, if you need to revisit that, go and see a previous video. So let's first format our total cost cell. So we're going to write equals sum product. Click there. Then we're gonna highlight our first array and we're gonna highlight cells B5 and C C5 in this workbook. Then we're gonna push comma. And then we're gonna highlight our decision variables. So it's B3 and C3 in this workbook. And we're gonna close our bracket, but then we're gonna go into our line and we're just gonna put dollar signs in front of the uh, letter and number of our decision variables in order to lock our reference cell so that we know that it will always be referencing that cell. Um, we can also format our total cost cell. So um, you might want to put a border around it. So I'm going to put a, a bit of a thicker border around it, just like that. And then um, I might add a bit of a fill. And since we're dealing with cost, why don't we make this a bit of a, um, well, we're dealing with money. So we could we just, uh, we'll make it green. One of the things we can do with these uh, cost cells is we can format them to dollars. So we just click, go up here to number and we click on dollars and then that will format it nicely. We can also do that with our total cost cell and just put dollars. And as you'll see, you get dollars with a little dash. Now we can look at this to see if this is working correctly. We can just arbitrarily plug numbers in. So let's say we bought three, three bags of super grow. So three bags times $6 makes $18, so that makes sense. If we were looking at crop grow, let's say we bought two bags, that's $6, so two times three is six. Again, that checks out. And then just to make sure everything works, let's put this all together. So three bags of super, of super grow, so three, six times three is 18, plus two bags of crop quick, so two times three is six. So following our minimization objective function, indeed this equation appears to be working. You can put whatever numbers you want in there, but for the sake of um, this example, I'm just going to start um, with nothing in the cell. From there, we can identify our constraints. So in our cells here, we have our constraints and we have a few constraints. So we're not going to worry about our non-negativity constraint. We'll do that in the next step. 
But first we're going to write out our constraint for nitrogen. And according to our um, constraint equation, um, we're looking at two for supergrow. So two pounds of nitrogen for supergrow and four for crop quick. And we're gonna say that this is the left-hand side. This is and our right-hand side. And it says that this must be greater than or equal to 16. I'm just gonna leave this cell blank for the moment, the left-hand side. Then we're gonna write our next constraint and this is phosphate. And we're told that this is four X1 plus three X2 must be greater than or equal to 24. And then finally, our calcium constraint is three X1 plus one X2 must be greater than or equal to 10. From there, we can identify our equation for our left-hand side here. So all we're gonna do is write sum product. We're going to highlight B8C8 comma, and then highlight our decision variables, B3 and C3. But we're gonna go in and make sure that we lock our reference cells for our decision variables. So we're gonna put dollar signs in front of the letters and numbers, and you'll see why in the next step. And then we're gonna close our brackets here. And then we're gonna highlight this cell. We're just gonna click on it. We're gonna move our cursor over until you see this thick black cross. And all you're gonna do is double click and it will automatically create the same equation, but for each respective row. So you'll see in row eight, where we previously had B8, C8. Um, in the next row down, we have B9, C9. But importantly, because we locked our reference cells, you'll notice that B3 and C3, that is our decision variables, uh, will stay the same. We can do a few other things if we'd like. We can, um, we can add some color here if we want. So we'll just format this cell on our right-hand side. Uh, we can put this in red since we hard-coded it in there. Um, these are our constraints that we need to adhere by. Uh, you can format the left-hand side if you wish, uh, acknowledging that there's an equation in there. Um, we can do it whatever color you might like, as long as it makes sense to you. Um, let's pick you know, different colors here. Um, let's go maybe, let's go a nice pink. And now we have our, uh, our problem virtually set up. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna click on our data tab. This may be a little bit different if you're working on Windows, but it'll be very similar. And then we're gonna go to Solver. Click on Solver. And what's gonna happen is you're going to get a box like this that pops up. And it's gonna ask us to set our objective. So that's what we're gonna do. It's not the cell that it wanted us to reference. So we're going to click on our objective function cell. That is cell D5 in this worksheet. Now we have to pay attention to uh, what it's asking us. So to max, min, or value of. In this case, we're doing a minimization problem, so we're gonna click minimization. And then it's asking us by changing which, by changing variable cells, well, we're just gonna say by changing variable cells in B3 and C3. So we can just go to the sheet and highlight that. And then we're gonna add some constraints. So our first constraint is that, and this pop-up window showed up, so I'll just make that available for you. So cell reference, so this value well, in this case, it must be greater than or equal to, so we'll just adjust this, right? Clicking here, so less than or equal to, equal to, greater than or equal to. So in this case, it's greater than or equal to, and then our constraint is 16. We're just gonna click add. We can do another one, so we'll do for phosphate. Again, greater than, oops. For phosphate, we we'll click there, and then we're dealing with greater than or equal to, and our constraint being 24. I'm gonna click add again, and then we'll do our last one. 
and then greater than or equal to, and that's our last constraint. We'll say okay. And then you'll see your box that appears uh, solver parameters. So everything looks okay. We're gonna make unconstrained variables non-negative. So this is our non-negativity constraint. And then we're gonna select a solving method. The GRG nonlinear is not what we're looking for. We're looking for simplex LP. So now we have all of our constraints. Just double check that we've loaded those in there and we've loaded them incorrectly. We have our um, objective cell, that's right. So then we're just gonna click solve. And then a pop-up window is likely gonna appear. It's gonna look something like this. And it's gonna say keep solver solutions and it's gonna ask us what kind of reports we want. So in this video, we're gonna ask for an answer report and we're just, so we're gonna highlight answer report and then we're just gonna click okay. And you'll see that uh, an answer report was automatically populated. You'll notice that our optimal solution was given to us as 1.2 and 6.4. So this is exactly what we calculated in a previous video. So good for us, but this is for computation. And then we can see our solver report here, which is just telling us, um, so a number of things here. So the results, um, solver found a solution, all constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied, so that's good news. We have our total cost, and we see that the optimal cost, so the minimization of our cost is $26.40. And we are looking to buy 1.2 uh, bags of SuperGrow and 6.4 bags of CropQuick. And we'll notice that we can look at our constraints, and we'll see that our constraints for calcium and phosphate are binding, um, where our, uh, our constraint for nitrogen is non-binding with a large amount of slack. So there we have it. We have solved our problem using computation. I hope this helps. Um, again, this is on Mac. It should be quite similar on Windows, but there may be a few uh, intricacies that are a little bit different. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If this video helped make business analytics easy, consider giving the video a like. And if you need additional help with business analytics, please consider subscribing to the channel. I look forward to solving many more problems with you next time.